the duty bag, part-time filing cabinet, part-time gear locker. But there's really more to it than just stuffing things into a bag. Let's look a little deeper. All right, man, take a seat, quick look. We're nearly we'd start with the uh, orientation of the car here, but we got calls pending and we got to get to them. So we're rolling. We're gonna have to learn on the way. All right, today I set the car. So this is my first video that's by request. I've gotten several people who have asked about duty bags. Now duty bags are kind of like an equipment belt for inside the car. All the stuff that I want to have immediate access to when I'm out on the street, I keep on my vest or in my pockets or on my belt. And the bag is for all the stuff that I'm not likely to need out on the street, but I am likely to need in the car or that I might be deploying as I'm getting out. You'll see kind of where I'm coming from as we go along with it. This duty bag is a 511 variety. I also had an Uncle Mike's one, which I completely thrashed over the course of six years. I might splice that in at some point, a video of that, to just kind of show you how worn these get. It's important to buy a quality duty bag because they do actually take a whole lot of abuse coming in and out of cars. So the reason I did it set up like this instead of my picnic bench or on a bed or on the floor where you can get a better look at the items that are inside of the bag is I think it's important to show why things are where they're at inside of the bag. You have to realize that when you're putting stuff in the bag, you're going to have to get it out while seated in the car. The whole idea of this is to have quick, quick access to things that you're not going to have enough little cubbies in the car for and to be able to move it from car to car so that you can have your stuff with you all the time and be able to take it in and out with one bag. So I set the video up with this kind of weird angle because I want you to see from the perspective of the user of the bag, from the driver, from the police officer, from the security guard, who's going to be using the bag. And that'll kind of dovetail into why things are orientated in the bag the way that they are. I'd also like to point out that I pulled this bag from my squad, put it into my car to go do a side job, and I didn't really clean the thing out. So there's receipts and little trinkets, and this is just how the bag is every day. I don't intend this video to be a diagram for how you should set your bag up. I'm just hoping that it kind of gets the wheels turning a little bit about how to set a bag up and what type of things you might want to put inside and kind of give you a look into how I do it. Like I said with my note-taking video, it's the way I do it, it's not necessarily the only way. In fact, there's a thousand different ways to do this. I've used a couple different types of bags. I settled a long time ago on a soft-sided uh, rectangular bag that has a strap you can throw over the seat back that kind of holds the bag in place uh, when the car goes flying around and has a little bit of cargo capacity so I can put a lot of different stuff in it because there's a lot of stuff that I like to keep immediately available in the car with me. So I'll start off with the fact that a lot of duty bags have a big patch that says police or security or uh, security forces, you know, Air Force security forces or military police on the top, or it'll be embroidered into the top of the bag. I have no idea why people do that. Why I have no idea why companies do that, and I have no idea why guys like it. I know that they do. If anybody knows why that's embroidered in the top of the bag, other than to make it look cool. Let me know. I, I'm actually interested. You know, nobody that owns one of those bags with police written across the top has given me a good explanation of why they have a big patch that says police on the top. But my bag has Velcro on the top to put one of those patches. And what I did is I just took the extra divider that comes with um, the duty bag when I bought it, and I stuck it to the top so I won't lose it in case I need the extra divider some other time. Also on the outside of the bag, I have my baton which slides through the loops, and as you can see from the angle, in case I need to exit the car and I feel I'm going to need my heavier duty baton, I have it available to me. And when I get back in, it's fairly easy to slide back into place. If I was to orient it the other way, I'd have to get out of the car, go around, and open the door to slide the thing out. On the closest pocket to me, I have a spare radio battery. Like I've said before in the radio microphone video, 
if you're out of radio contact, you're in a world of hurt. So I like to keep a charged battery in the bag with me and right within view. So if my radio starts doing the chirp chirp telling me it's dead, I can change the batteries out just by stopping on the side of the road and popping it out. I keep a decent pair of binoculars, as you can see I've had for an awful long time, in the bag. Just some uh, 10 or 15 power Tascos or something or another, I don't know. Got them at Walmart a long time ago. And then on this side, on the outside of the bag, I keep my can of pepper spray. I don't carry pepper spray on my belt, but I have found it to be very useful for people who decide they don't want to come out of closets. So spray a little pepper spray inside the closet. It starts vaporizing a little bit, especially when it's hot out and people decide they're going to come out. But it's not something I need on my belt necessarily. At least I don't feel like it. So I put it here. So if I get out of the car to help somebody else and you say this, I got a guy stuck in the closet, I can grab this and go with it. And then at the bottom of this bag, I've just got boatloads and boatloads of change because when I'm in drive throughs I get my change back and I dump it right here underneath the pepper spray. It holds the pepper spray up and it keeps my change from getting yanked by the mechanics or anybody else that happens inside my car because all of our cars at work are key to like. Next to that is probably one of the weirder things. I have a BB gun and BBs and CO2 cartridges. And the reason I keep this is for training. I work in an urban area the vast majority of the time, and when I'm training new guys, if they have a problem with marksmanship or with firearm skills, I can do most of the things that I could do live with a firearm on a range. I can do it in an industrial district or in a forest preserve with a BB gun. The department has red and blue guns for other training purposes, but I found this to be really helpful, especially with some new guys, depending on what academy they go to, don't get a lot of shooting on the move training. I found that if I put a tin can up on a, a fence post or on the ground, I can have the trainee move and shoot at the same time and kind of get the feel for that skill without having to expend ammunition or find a range and do all those expensive things that in field training were just kind of hacking our way through. It also has a terrible trigger. So anybody that's having marksmanship problems, if I put an aluminum can, which gives them immediate feedback, it allows people to see and hear when they've actually hit the can. And when the can moves, it makes them reacquire a new target. And it has a terrible trigger. If you can handle hitting a tin can while you're moving with this terrible trigger, it's going to make you a better semi-auto pistol shooter. Kind of like uh, I tell a lot of people that have problems shooting semi-automatic pistols, switch to a revolver for a while, switch to a, a double action revolver and shoot it double action only, and having to work that double action trigger is gonna make you a better semi-auto shooter. This is the same effect, but way cheaper. CO2 and BBs, I donate this to the cause. And then on the far side, I have SPF 100 sunscreen because I'm bleach white. All the way at the farthest end of the bag, I have the Patrolman's Universal Repair Kit. Black duck brand duct tape. I really like this stuff. You'd be surprised how many things this fixes. Normally inside the bag, I keep my coffee cup, but it's full right now and I'm using it. So it's gonna stay in the cup holder where it does most of the time. I normally only store it inside the bag. All right, so enough for the outside. We'll go to the top flap. Again, in the same theme of how quickly am I gonna to need to get to the things that I'm storing in here, my duty gloves stay in the closest pouch on the top of the bag. My bag stays open most of the time. I don't really see a reason to close it. I haven't noticed it jostling around enough to to make things become projectiles inside the car with the strap over the back and tightened. So I keep my duty gloves in this pocket on the outside of the bag to keep them really handy. And then under this flap, I have extra pads, markers, pens, and a magazine. This is a magazine for my duty pistol, and I use a Glock 35. Most cops in the area that I work 
use some sort of 40 caliber handgun and I started carrying a spare magazine in my bag when I had the first guy come to work and not have been issued duty ammo for whatever reason or perhaps not have brought his duty ammo with him. So I started keeping a spare mag so that way we can at least move on with the day if that happens. Plus having spare magazines full of ammunition laying around in various parts of the car I've never found to be a problem and no one has ever told me after an after action report man Johnny Johnny might have come home had I not brought all that ammo with so I keep spare ammo around there's a little hand sanitizer spray nozzle in here even though I have hand sanitizer in my car I like to keep a backup on this on the far end again in an area that's a little less accessible when I'm inside a car I keep pencils and a boatload of medication. All sorts of stuff for colds and flus and other nasty bugs that nobody wants. Because when I'm out and it's cold and I have a cold and I feel like crap and I'm stuck at work anyway, I don't want to have to go in and find a Walgreens or find a 7-Eleven. I want to be able to just grab it out of my bag and go. So I keep a bunch of stuff in here. Lots of like Advil and aspirin and cold medicine and diarrhea, anti-diarrhea medicine. You want to see one thing that I'll absolutely insist if you have a duty bag you should keep in it? Put anti-diarrhea medicine in it. That will save your day. So then down inside of the bag, I have a brown sack and then inside of here is where I keep all of my old calendars, some toothpicks, my keys, a spoon, chapstick, my wallet, all of that. And the reason I have it inside of a tan bag is one, so it doesn't all get lost, and two, at night, most of, and knowing that most of these items are black, it's very hard to find things at the bottom of a black bag when they're black, like my wallet that's black leather at the bottom of a black bag, or the keys that are of a black fob at the bottom of a black bag. Having a light color bag inside that you can keep all that small stuff, I found to be really useful. Underneath that, again, within easy reach, is my high-vis vest for when I get out on a traffic accident or anytime I'm going to have to be in traffic. It's a good idea to put a vest on. I thought about doing a video on that. I just can't think of a really expedient way to show how awesome these are. They look silly. I'll grant you that. But these will save you from a lot of traffic crashes. And down in here I've got another bottle of uh, ibuprofen. Probably fell out of there. Extra deodorant. And a small pair of bolt cutters. And no, that's not a joke. You'd be amazed how many times bolt cutters have come in handy. Enough times that I keep them in my bag where I can get to them when I'm on shift. Because when you need bolt cutters... Nothing else does the job of bolt cutters. You'd be surprised how many times it comes up where somebody gets on the air and they say, oh, we've got a domestic in progress. There's a, a padlock on this gate that's keeping us from getting inside, yada, yada, yada. Bolt cutters have saved my day more than once. In the front section, I've got a parking ticket book, a magazine. I keep a magazine in my duty bag for those times when you're going to be stuck at the hospital watching a prisoner and your phone's dead, which... Has happened to me more than once. I keep a ticket book. When you start at a new agency, it's important to find out before you go in for your first day what orientation the tickets are. You want to impress the people that are going to be training you? Ask them what ticket book to buy. Because most guys show up and they don't have a ticket book with them. A ticket book works. You have your tickets on the outside and you can fold them around. And then there's a storage in the back for your offense code books and your cheat sheets and the court keys and all of that it keeps it all convenient gives you a nice hard writing surface to write on in the car and then in front of that i have my clipboard i've got a posse box which is just a, a metal clipboard it's made for um, police and public safety work there's a little clip on the top here that i have since broken from beating the crap out of this that you can attach somebody's driver's license so you can copy information down. I haven't used that in forever. I haven't really missed it. Inside is various paperwork stacked up, a traffic crash stencil, which is really good for having to draw diagrams, a spare piece of cardboard to hand off to people as a clipboard, like trainees that never bought a clipboard. I go, well, 
here's your clipboard, buddy. Uh, they come the next day with a clipboard. White out for those oopsie moments. And then all of my paperwork is stored in these multicolored plastic sleeves that allow me to keep it all separated so I don't end up with a big jumble of paperwork inside. So that's duty bags. It's kind of a weird, eclectic mishmash of equipment that needs to stay in the cab of the car. I hope that helps you out, gives you something to think about, and we'll bring up something next time. Maybe you guys could come up with something for me to do.